What's up, bro, chachos? We're out here in the woods today doing some woodsy things. I got my multicam tap. I got my uh, tactical plaid on, my camo, you know, camo plaid. It's looking pretty cool. And I got my general purpose rifle. We're out here doing uh, rifley things in the woods, having a good old time. But that's not the point of the video. The point of this video is GPRs, general purpose rifles. All right, start things out, we're gonna talk about what a general purpose rifle is to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, GPR, general purpose rifle, is like your, your go-to rifle, your you know, do everything rifle, your uh, zero to 300 uh, range rifle, your you know, minute man, whatever, do everything jack of all trades rifle. Since we're talking about what it is, we're also gonna talk about what it is not. It is not a Ten and a half inch, you know, door kicking rifle or a CQB SWAT team rifle. It's not a 18 and 18 or 20 inch sniper rifle or a marksman rifle. You know, it's not something you're gonna take with a huge scope and a bipod and you know shoot 77 grain target rounds through to you know get half MOA at 800 yards. It's not what it is. It is a mid-size carbine. I'm calling it a carbine because it's not a you know full-size AR rifle is originally 20 inches. These are a little bit shorter, so I'm going with a carbine. It is a 14 and a half ish to 16 inch carbine that has a red dot or a magnifier, you know, limited magnification, a light, a sling. It is lightweight, it is maneuverable, and it is capable outdoors from zero to 300 yards. All right, so I know I probably hurt a lot of your feelings when I said it doesn't have a bipod and a huge scope on it. Everything depends on your location, what your surroundings are. I'm in Alabama. I'm standing in the middle of the woods right now with clear you know, openings and fields. The farthest I can see right now, that direction, is probably the farthest, maybe 200 yards, all the way to the edge of the trees, maybe 200 yards. Here, it's like 40 you know, 20 yards, 70 yards, 50 yards over that direction, you know, you're not going to need a 800 yard gun in the woods of Alabama. Even if you're like, very rarely are you going to find a field where you've got 800 yards in Alabama. Maybe in South Alabama where there's a lot of flatland, a lot of farms and pastures, you could probably get out that far, but it's rare. It's not your, you know, your all day, every day range. If you're out out west, you know, Utah desert and you have a little more range, maybe you could go like a six power scope, um, a one to six. That might suit you a little better. To me, it's just not for me. That's why I have red dot magnifier, three power magnifier. Because in my area, like I said, I'm not going to be shooting that far away. I need something that's going to be a little bit closer up. I can shoot quick. You know, we'll be... Uh, in and out of the woods, short range type stuff. That's why I went with what I went with. So your your GPR also needs to be fairly lightweight, in my opinion, because um, you're going to be really come on, like realistically, what we're building and designing these rifles to do is to be carried. We're going to use them. We're going to walk with them. We're going to tote them. They're going to be on a sling. They're going to have other gear with them, and we're going to be carrying them. And in my opinion, I like lighter weight things. This has a lightweight barrel. It has a slim, lightweight handguard. No extra stuff. It has small optics because they're lightweight. 
you know it doesn't have the only thing i would add onto this extra would maybe an ir laser that would be the only other thing i would add on here it probably wouldn't even put a suppressor on there i might take one with me but I'm not definitely not going to carry it on here because you know look how long it would be and how much weight it would have on it so keep it lightweight think of it like a uh, a rifleman's rifle you know or like a, a patrol a patrol rifle maybe a better not like patrol as in you're a police officer and you're riding in your car on your patrol but you're like walking patrol that kind of thing as far as barrel length goes like i said 14 and a half or 16 inch barrel length 20 is more of like a, a rifle i should call this a general purpose carbine maybe but i like 16 it gives you uh, it's the standard barrel length A. You can find it anywhere. Like 95% of AR-15s have 16-inch barrel. It's more so due to NFA laws and things like that, but you see where I'm coming from. You know what I'm getting at. Don't do me like that. Anyway, it keeps, it retains a good bit of velocity for the bullet, and it's short enough to where you can maneuver it if you had to. You know, if you were in the woods, not getting hung up, on trees and briars we have you see how thick the woods are back here you know especially like when things are growing up from a clear cut it's really thick you don't want any extra length hanging up on things if you happen to go in and out of a house or a car you still want it to be somewhat maneuverable and maintain velocity and to me a 14 and a half to 16 that range does that a lot of people are going to say you know 13 7 is the new hotness right now because we took a half inch off of another rifle and now we just have to add it right back because you still have to maintain 16 inches maybe you save a little weight i don't i haven't jumped on the 13.7 bandwagon yet i don't understand it you know because it to me like, it doesn't matter maybe you could if you did a pistol but if you're going to make it a pistol might as well make it like a, a 10 and a half or 11 and a half and get rid of those two inches to make it small you know it's the point is you're you're gonna have to add that longer muzzle device back onto it and pin and weld it to make it 16 anyway so it doesn't matter like what your actual you know if you're shaving a half inch or three quarters of an inch off of your barrel you're still going to add that length back so just go with 14 and a half they're more popular you know you get a little bit more velocity i i don't know maybe i'll come around one day to 13 7 hotness but for now i'm just not there yet all right let's do a quick kind of a build breakdown i have i'm sure a video on this particular rifle this thing is like uh 15 years old now 13 years old now it's my first ar it's been in a lot of videos you know you've probably seen it before but i've changed a few things so we're going to go over that uh recap some of the old things and talk about some of the new things and basically uh, talk about why i've built this rifle the way i've built it and the purpose behind everything because everything needs a purpose all right we'll start from here just because i'm right-handed i'm going that way magpul ctr stock uh, i went with ctr because it's got this little clamp deal right here and it just makes it a little sturdier you know you can go with uh the moe or the mo stock whatever they've even got the new pr stock which i might get for my uh my 18 inch anyway b5 everybody a lot of good stocks just get one that's you know kind of lightweight kind of sturdy still gives you some pretty good uh you know it's a stock don't get too crazy with it it has uh, i believe an h2 buffer in it because uh you know we'll talk about the the barrel in a minute but it goes good with this barrel and the ammo i shoot so h2 i have a uh, bcm let me just take take that out so i'm not messing with it all right, BCM charging handle. Right here, it's got the medium latch. Uh, I like the medium latch because it gives you a little more purchase, but it's not huge. It's not hanging out, you know, getting caught on your gear and all that stuff. Um, and the BCM is uh, stronger. It's reinforced like back here. I believe it might be stronger inside also, but I've got BCM charging handles on a few rifles and I've had really good luck with them and I like them. The trigger is an, uh, what is it, an ALG, I think it's the ACT, Advanced Combat Trigger. It's not the uh, the base model one, but it's not like a Geisley. It's just kind of in between um, ALG trigger. 
and it does pretty well inside parts kit i have no idea it might be like bcm parts they don't really matter to me they're probably all the same somebody might argue different but you know whatever if you want to spend all that money on pins and springs go for it uh the lower is an anderson lower go ahead and roast me in the comments whatever it's an anderson lower it is a i don't even know what upper it's probably a palmetto upper it's got the square little square right there so that tells you what foundry it was made in so you know doesn't matter it's an upper um the grip right here magpul it's the uh I think the k2 might be what it's called i probably should have prepared better for this but whatever i bothering my arm um it's got the more vertical angle so you know you can get a little more comfortable of a grip when you're shooting all you know modern tactical style you know we're not shooting like this anymore we shoot more like that so you need the angle to be a little bit more comfortable um inside here you see freshly cleaned bcm bolt carrier i took this rifle to a uh, eagle tactics rifle class and i didn't clean it before i went it had been a while before i cleaned it and it was so gummed up and so sluggish i could feel I could feel the bolt like just dragging through the buffer tube. You might think I'm crazy, but I know what I felt. I could feel it dragging through the buffer tube. I took it apart. Everything was dirty, gummed up. So freshly cleaned, freshly lubed bolt carrier. So these uh, BCM bolts, they're like, have they have like upgraded O-rings or something for the extractor, ejector, whatever. They're particle inspected, high pressure, radar, sonograph, whatever stuff. They do all the stuff to them. Uh, carpenter grade bolt you know whatever you think of that makes a bolt carrier good they did it excuse me uh let's see standard dust flap uh this little riser right here i've got a half inch riser this is a utg i know you're probably gonna roast me because i've got a fairly expensive gun and a not so expensive riser but i mean it's it's a piece of metal that clamps and it rises and it's got three screws right here and a full length, you know, bar to clamp. So whatever. And there weren't very many options for half inch risers when I bought this. So it is what it is. On top of the half inch riser, I've got a primary arms one uh, X prism. The reason I went prism because I have astigmatism. And if you don't know what that does to red dot, pretty much ruins them. It makes them like a big blur, like my handgun right here. Outside it's not as bad, inside it's terrible because you get a big starburst, but that nice crisp dot is no longer nice and crisp. It's kind of flared out like a starburst, but not the candy like you know what I'm talking about. But on this prism, it's an etched reticle and it's super crisp, super clean, no matter what. And I just like it. And the glass, you know, it's 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 good. It's really good. Also, it's on a uh, a rifle that I intend to protect my life and my family and possibly the country with. For whatever reason, you know, it's etched reticle. It's never going to go bad for all the you know people that like EMP people. Something happens, it's still going to work because it's etched. Um, it does have good battery life at Shake Awake, and the etch reticle is illuminated. But if all that goes bad, run out of batteries, can't get batteries, whatever, I'm still going to be able to look through it and, and see the reticle. Behind it, I have the Primary Arms Prism, like 3X Prism Magnifier. Um, it's pretty cool, too. Super good glass. Just flips the side, locks out. Um, it is a little weird having a, a prism, two prisms lined up in front of each other because uh, this isn't like a normal red dot. It's not just like one piece of glass. It's like two or something in there. It's like an actual scope. So your objective focusing and all that stuff is just different. I'm going to put this back because it might be messed up the microphone. I don't know. If it did, I apologize. But anyway, having, uh, you know, two optics looking through each other the way these are, it's kind of weird. You have to, like, max out this ring on the back for the focus and all that. But 
you can do it and it works great one downside is like the eye relief just the nature of the eye relief um this prism ideally this one x would be like back here so it as you come back on the optic it gets you know your uh field of view gets bigger and bigger so optimal field of view this prism would be back here but you gotta put the magnifier behind it so you gotta move it up you lose a little bit of field of view it's not that big a deal though and then you know when you put the magnifier on it that nice crisp etched reticle gets a little bit bigger and you can see clearly a little bit farther away so that's cool the reason i went with a um a dot and a magnifier versus like a, a one to six scope <coughs> was for like size and weight and capability this is smaller it's lighter weight um i can get a true one x like fast you know one x like red dot style shots and i can flip this over and get three x and go out to two three hundred yards a little bit easier than I would with a 1x. Um, everybody's got like this. I don't understand the, the one to six. Maybe somebody just needs to like teach me, or maybe I need to learn. But to me, like a one to six, I'm either going to be one or I'm going to be six. I'm not going to be like three and a half. I don't see why you would. I, maybe there's a, a situation why you would need to be like three and a half. But to me, I just imagine being at one. And then flipping all the way to six. Like if you need magnification, you need all of it. So one, six, you know, one or one, three, one, three. It's the same maneuver as one to six. This is easier and it's lighter and smaller and whatever. And your one X is better than a one X from a, a scope. So that's my little rant on, you know, variable, low power variable optics. L LPVOs. That's my little rant on those. You know, whatever. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Moving forward, this rail, 15 inch rail, because I like it to cover as much of the barrel as I can. That way, if I prop on a, uh, a barricade, I'm not skewing the shot. I'm not putting force on the barrel. Because if you rest your barrel on something and you put pressure on it, it will throw your shot enough to miss. So I like to cover up as much barrel as I can. And it looks cool to me and it gives me more room to mount things and put things up here <coughs> this particular rail is an alg emr uh, version 3 got full picatinny on the top which i like moe not moe m lock m lock all the way around which i like m lock better than key mod uh, they don't really make these uh hand guards or rails anymore they're hard to find so i'll probably be going to uh the bcm mcmr or whatever it's called the the thin bcm m lock rail probably going to that on all my future handguard purchases but anyway big barrel nut like barrel nuts like this long on it so it's plenty stable you can put lasers and all that stuff on it and not have to worry about it you know getting thrown off uh it's got a Big barrel nuts, really tight lockup, very well made. It's ALG is the same company as Geisley, so if you know anything about them, you know what I'm talking about. Very nice handguard. I do have the uh, the BCM angled grip. I don't know what, know what they call it, their acronym, whatever. It's just a little angled hand stop thing. It gives me just enough to lock my, my edge of my palm, the heel of my hand into, and just give me a, a point to find every single time i can pull back i can use it to pull back you know i'm not gripping it like this you know like the early uh like 2000s iraq dudes with their vertical grips that's not you know no i grip like this with my finger forward more like a, a competition like three gun style grip so that's all i really need is just that little bit right there to lock my hand into and it gives me a place to index for my flashlight, which we'll talk about next. This is a uh, Streamlight, the, uh, the the larger one. I guess it's a 600. This is a uh, dual fuel. It can take the chargeable battery or whatever. 
Uh, one thing I'm not so great about it is the the pattern is like broad. It's not very tight. You know, it doesn't go as far. And for a rifle, I think it needs to be a little tighter and go a little farther. So, whatever. Anyway, it's plenty bright enough. It's surefire. It's solid. Um, it's on an Arasaka mount. I like these for my M-Lock rifles. Uh, they're small. They're slim. It keeps the light really tight to the rail. And, you know, it's just, it, it does what it needs to and nothing else. It's not bulky. It doesn't have, it's just, you know, a rail with, with holes in it. On top of it, I have this uh, 100 Concepts light cap right here to keep my uh, the front of my lens covered in the daylight and at night. Whenever you're not using your flashlight, keep that thing covered because A, it'll protect the light, and B, you know, this is made to shoot light out. You know, the little bolt, the little LED in there, it has reflector in there to shoot light out so wouldn't you think if light is coming at you it's going to reflect the same thing so big you know giveaway if a light hits this and reflects off the sun can hit it glare off the sun whatever that's why we put you know they put kill flashes and stuff on the front of their optics to do the same thing this is just an easy way to do it for your flashlight and if you happen to hit your light like hit the button you're not going to get an nd on your white light it's going to capture it all inside there it does work i've tried it and you know you're not gonna give yourself away by accidentally hitting your white light um i did have backup sights i still have the front on here i just haven't taken it off for whatever reason these are uh midwest combat sights they're really nice they're metal they do what they need to they're low pro uh the reason i took them off is because the one on the back i have nowhere to put it because all this is taking up room and it wouldn't match anyway because this is like standard height and the way i have this is a half inch plus it's like two inches and some change um it's like 1.6 or 1.5 for the optic and then another half for the riser so you do the math the reason i have it raised up like that is uh just a little easier to get behind you don't have to like hunch your neck to get behind the optic it's a little more comfortable and i have room to get my night vision behind it and yes you can look through a uh, a 1x prism scope with night vision the reticle is still clear you just have to make sure all your focusy things are focused the right way they need to be and you can do it it's not the best but it works so you know it's all a trade-off uh yeah so backup sights that's that uh the muzzle device is a griffin griffin armament m4 sd flash comp i think is the the full verbiage for it this is like one of the old school ones. The uh, the newer ones have like a cutout right here on these uh, lugs. They have some material cut away from them to make them lighter probably. But this one, like I said, is like 12, 13 years old. This was before they started doing that. But anyway, great. Flash comp does great for flash hiding. Uh, it does great for compensating. Uh, the only problem is with like with any other brake or compensator, it's very loud and concussive. For everybody around you but if you're gonna be shooting a rifle you have ear pro hopefully your your homies your dudes have ear pro also so it's not that big a deal <coughs> uh when it could become a big deal is like throwing leaves throwing dirt just the the signature you know it's gonna make it's gonna disturb your surroundings when you shoot it so take that into consideration it is mounted on top of or at on the end of a 16 inch Daniel Defense cold hammer forged lightweight profile mid length gas 556 barrel chrome lined cold hammer forged all that stuff. Like I said, with the bolt, uh, whatever you could think of they could do to make a barrel cool and make it as good as they could do it, this barrel has it. It's got, it's, you know, like I said, chrome lined cold hammer forged mid-length gas, lightweight profile, all that stuff. Great barrel. Shot a lot of rounds through it. It's still doing great. So, talking about the barrel and the bolt, those are the, like the heart of the rifle. If you're going to spend anything, like any, if you want to spend a lot of money on anything for your rifle, bolt and barrel need to be that. Make sure it's got a good barrel. Make sure it's got a good bolt. All the other stuff around it, you can fudge a little bit on 
but to me bolt and barrel all my rifles have good bolts good barrels except for my 18 it's got like an 80 dollar palmetto barrel but it still shoots half moa with certain ammo so it's it's good it just won't last near as long as this one will but at any rate that's not a uh, it's not a machine gun not shooting it like one so uh, this one is not a machine gun either but it's designed to do more like cover fire rapid fire that kind of thing it's a, a, a it's a fighting rifle it needs a barrel that can hold up better so anyway bolt carrier barrel most important things on the rifle everything else comes second to that get a good bolt get a good barrel the magazines that i'm using uh i keep a windowed p mag just because you know i only have like four or five windowed p mags when i first got into this I, I, you know i thought that was really cool so i bought these and they're like my go-to's the ones i keep in my rifles all my other p mags are just standard non-windowed because i don't feel like spending three or four extra dollars per mag just so i can have a window to tell me how many rounds are left like all these right here are just standard these are actually p mag m3s these are the new ones the little tan guys found those on a pretty sweet deal somewhere can't remember where but i got them this one right here is old school steel mag that i painted you know doesn't matter get some good steel mags get p mags and you'll be good to go like p mags are nine dollars for black uh m2 p mag they're great they work shot good gillions of rounds over the you know throughout the world over time they're just great get them nine dollars buy a bunch of them if you don't like them being black paint them you're probably going to paint them anyway like this one's foliage and it matches whatever you know do your thing on the bottom this is a uh, mag pod they're pretty cool i don't run them on all my mags because they don't do good with like mag pouches as much these open tops they would probably do great in like a, a hsgi taco if you have anything with a flap or like a double stack it's not going to work great because you know they're, they're just going to hang up and the flaps aren't going to do good whatever as you can see it's a little bit wider than the profile of the magazine but what it does it gives you a flat you know it makes the bottom of the magazine flat so you can make it a monopod and it works great i've done it plenty of times put this on the ground no uh -oh. doesn't help it going side to side but gives you just a, a flat surface so now you know you've got a, a monopod or bipod built in to your magazine there's no need for extra weight out here and it's just a little more secure than the one point of contact on standard mag it gives you another to whatever mag pots this sling uh last thing on the rifle i guess is the sling uh it's a centrifuge training sling i've got a video on it it's got this cool little hook right here because like it when you store it fold it to the side and pull the slack back and hook it on this and it keeps it nice and tight on the side of the gun it's got a slider right here uh qd here QD here, all my rifles, the slings are set up the exact same way. They some sort of QD or attachment up toward the receiver, and then another QD or attachment on the, uh, I guess, this side of the stock. That's just how I like to run them. Two point, it's comfortable when it's hanging. If you're walking, you can put it in two point. If you know you're going to be maneuvering, you can just swim out of it and make it kind of like a one point just hanging around the neck, you know, whatever whole different topic on slings <coughs> uh, all the controls right here standard safety lever standard uh, uh, bolt release you can get the ones with bigger paddles on here those are cool you can get different safeties you know you can get ambi safeties or like 45 it doesn't matter I just you know these work for me I haven't haven't swapped them out um, and that's that since I'm talking about bolt releases, these are designed to be hit with a thumb. That's why they're like thumb shaped and have grooves. They're not made to, to do this. Stop beating the shit out of your rifles and just hit it with your thumb. When you load the mag, 
hit it with the thumb. It's like they put it there for a reason not to do this with. Or you could just run the charger handle, whatever. All right, so GPR, here it is. Here's my uh, general purpose rifle. I went over all the parts, uh, why they're on here and what they're good at, what they're not good at. A lot of these parts you can find at a shameless plug, shameless plug for primary arms for the optics. I do have a link. Um, go below the video to my, I think it's link tree. You can find a primary arms link. You can buy things off of that. It helps me out. I would appreciate it. But anyway, primary arms optics, these are great. Uh, you can find a whole lot of this other stuff at primary arms. Also, I've been shopping there for years, getting all the good stuff. They ship fast. They have a huge selection. I don't know why I'm plugging. They didn't give me anything to say that. It's just I've always liked shopping there, and their optics have gotten really good over the years. So, yeah, primary arms. Yeah, I knew you guys were going to say something about my ammo. What kind of ammo you got? Right now, I have 62 grain AAC ammo. Uh, I used to, for the longest time, keep 55 grain uh, M193 in there. And the reason I swapped to these 62 grains is because the way the price of ammo is now, it's like the same price as the 55 grain. And that's why I got it before, because um, it was cheaper. It was easier to stock up on with 55. And I uh, want 5.56. I don't want 2.23 in my fighting rifle. I want, you know, full power, full everything, 5.56. Oh, this is 5.56, 62 grain. Um, I got that. It's a little bit heavier. It does better in the 1 to 7 twist barrels. That gives you a little bit more weight. It stabilizes a little better. Uh, it's better designed. It's better paired with the 1 and 7 twist, the heavier bullets. Uh, I could shoot like 75s or 77s, but they're like even more expensive. And if you think about it, like the majority of the bullets you shoot aren't going to be necessarily at somebody or hitting somebody. They're just going to be in a general direction. So, you know, the bullets are going to do what they need to when you hit. All you got to do is make sure you do what you're supposed to do. They'll take care of the rest. Anyway, 62 grains. Some of them, uh, some of my mags, like these might have nope these have 62 the aac some of them have the green tips uh, those are cool too for whatever they don't i don't think they're as good on like soft target as 55 but if you're dealing with like a barrier glass uh brick woods whatever it does a little better for that and uh yeah it's a little bit heavier so it does better down range better ballistic coefficient and all that crap so some of them are green tips, some of them are AAC 62 grains. So yeah, that's my rifle. Um, this is the way I have it, this is the way I like it. Right now it's been this way for a pretty good while. The only thing I did was change to an etched reticle and a magnifier basically. But this is how it is, it's probably how it's gonna stay for a pretty good while. Um, so yeah, get your rifle, get outside, wherever you can. If you don't have land, you don't have access to land or anything like that. You know, find somewhere where you can shoot. Find a buddy that's got land. Go shoot on his land. You know, get better. Go to the gym. Get in shape. Learn something. And uh, and get ready because, you know, we don't really know what the world has to offer for us. So we need to be as ready as we can. We'll see y'all next time.